Hello, my name is Brian Lee. Today I have a presentation on raising freezer beef and also what happened during the pandemic in 2020 um, that may have led to a rise in the interest in freezer beef. Okay, so what is freezer beef and what are the benefits? Freezer beef is what I define as beef that you raise on your own for the purpose of harvesting and utilizing for your family or for yourself. Um, this may be part of a 4-H project for one of your children or a project um, of other educational organizations um, for the purpose of understanding how beef are raised and also some of the background of that. Um, one, of the, one of the main benefits is that you know how that animal is raised. You watch that animal every day as you're feeding it and taking care of it. So that's part of why this may be of interest. Um, it can be a fun family experience. It's a life experience. It's a very valuable experience um, for a student if they're uh, learning responsibility, um, care of an animal, um, and also just about um, food in general. Um, and it also may be cheaper than buying from the store. Um, or if you can't get the quality of beef you would like from the store, this is another option that you um, may be interested in. Recent uncertainty in the retail beef market has led some people to be interested in raising freezer beef. Um, COVID-19 spotlighted a lot of beef supply and demand difficulties, I would call them, in the market. Uh, a lot of uh, people in the middle of 2020 found it difficult to maybe find fresh meat or found it very expensive to purchase fresh meat. Um, and meat security may be one such reason to consider uh, raising a freezer beef. Um, so what happened in the beef industry from March um, until the um, fourth quarter of 2020? Um, packing plants didn't need as many cattle due to decreased production. Not as much meat was hitting the marketplace, meaning retailers had to pay more for supply and then passing that on to the consumer. Uh, marketing margin, which is box beef price minus live cattle prices, saw an increase. The same thing happened in 2019 when the Tyson plant in Holcomb, Kansas burned, which we also saw a uh, spike in prices. And producers with cattle ready for processing had problems placing cattle which also led to a hiccup in supply. Um, and so we saw a lot of interesting things happening in the market, um, which uh, passed on uncertainty and also concern in the beef industry. To reiterate some of the uncertainty in 2020, this is taken from LMIC. This is fed cattle marketings um, by, on a monthly basis by millions of head. Uh, you can see 2020 is the solid blue line. We started off at rather high marketings for cattle, meaning uh, cattle had places to go um, um, and marketers had a plan. And you can see in the middle of March, um, that number decreased because of the uncertainty in the beef market um, by you know somewhere around um, half a million head. Um, and then immediately back in June, um, jumped up again. Uh, so this hiccup in the market created a lot of concern and a lot of uncertainty. Here's a look at cattle slaughter for 2020 just to show the huge impact that the pandemic had. If you look in the first quarter there under the April and May numbers for commercial slaughter, they were at 79 and 77% of the previous year. That is a huge decrease when you're talking millions of animals. Um, and that impacted the daily average um, federally inspected slaughter um, about the same. So big, big numbers. So a change in slaughter is going to uh, deeply affect the uh, steer prices. So uh, you can see there April to almost uh, middle of June, if you look at the five area direct uh, steer prices compared to the previous year, um, it had a large impact. Prices were significantly lower from a couple of percent to you know almost uh, 10%. Um, and then the 
choice 600 pound to 900 pound and select 600 pound to 900 pound beef box cutout values um, almost a hundred dollars higher in some cases um, from the year before so maybe this hiccup in the market got you interested in raising your own freezer beef that's awesome whether that was from a food security standpoint or just not wanting to rely on the industry to supply you with your protein source. So, if you were going to raise your own freezer beef, what is it actually going to cost you? So, here's a rough breakdown of the cost of production of that animal. So, we assume that we're purchasing an animal, a steer in this case, for roughly $1,200. Um, we need some facilities to house this animal to make the animal comfortable, keep it safe, keep it in a fenced area, and also keep it watered. So uh, we have a startup cost of $68. We also assume this facility will be good for multiple years, so this cost is spread out over the cost of multiple years. Feed, um, we need to feed this animal, and for this case, um, we will feed this animal hay and also. Uh, a COB mix that we find at the local mill and you can see our feed costs there. We average um, at a little over $440. A, a veterinary fee, unfortunately, um, animals do get sick, do get injured, and we, we do um, figure in a vet service cost in there um, and that's just an average. Um, it could be more, it could be less, but we just put $200 in there. And then processing. At the end of this experience we will process that animal um, get it packaged and ready to put in the freezer and so we figure that cost in there and so we our average cost of production for this presentation is two thousand six hundred fifty eight dollars and twenty five cents this cost could be significantly more it could be significantly less based on your existing setup what you plan on feeding this animal but so this is an average and just an idea to help us get started for this presentation. Here's how we get the feed costs for this animal. Um, this is one of the major expenses over the course of this animal's life. Uh, so when we receive this animal, we are going to feed this steer free choice grass hay for around 200 days. And this is kind of to level the animal out and get them ready to start putting on pounds. So three months from processing, uh, we will start feeding this animal about five pounds of grain in addition to that free choice hay. This grain is typically a corn, oats, and barley mix, uh, COB if you get it from the local mill. This grain component of the diet is slowly increased by about a pound a day until it, the animal is eating 18 to 20 pounds per day and roughly five pounds of hay. And we break it down here, you can see the feed. Um, this is how we get the costs. So we figure um, hay, and grain, um, both at 15 pounds a day, closer to the end of this, um, which equals about um, 3,000 total pounds fed of hay, um, or 1.5 tons, and we figured a price at $145 per ton uh, for a total of $217.50 for our total hay needed. Um, the grain, they typically come in 100 pound bags from the mill. Uh, our total fed is going to be 1,350 pounds of grain, uh, 13 and a half 100 pound bags at the market price six, of $16.50 for a total of $222.75 uh, for a total feed bill of $440.25. That's how we came up with that feed cost. The processing of the animal will occur at a meat packing facility. It can be a local one. They all um, are typically similar in prices, um, but they will break the animal down and package the animal to be ready for the freezer. Um, the animal in question will be fed until it weighs about 1,100 pounds, um, and the animal is carrying a noticeable fat covering over the ribs and hips. Um, a typical processing fee is $750 and should yield about 500 pounds of meat. 60% um, return off of a 837-pound carcass, and this is pretty typical for breaking down an animal. 
of this meat, 30% or around 150 pounds will be higher in middle cuts and 70% or around 350 pounds will be lower in cuts like roast and hamburger. Um, these are common numbers for a beef animal. If you look at the cost of producing the animal and then the yield of meat off of that animal, our cost was around $5.32 per pound of meat. We don't break it out between lower end and higher end cuts. We just say that's what it costs us per pound. If you were to go to the store and buy similar cuts to what you'd receive off this animal, the retail cost of those lower end cuts ranges from around $2.77 to almost $8 per pound. So this is gonna be ground beef and roast. The retail cost of those higher end cuts is $8.50 all the way up to almost $12 per pound. So these are low end cuts, steaks, uh, typically the more desirable meats off of an animal. So um, our average price of $5.32 um, is looking pretty good when averaged across lower and higher end cuts. To break down these numbers a little more, um, I broke it down into lower end cuts and higher end cuts for the beef that we raised and also the cost of beef if you were to buy them from the store. So as you can see, like I said in the previous slide, we don't break out our lower and higher end cuts by uh, different prices per pound. We assume we raise that beef at $5.32 a pound. So we take that times the lower end cuts off of our raised beef um, and we yielded 350 pounds, if you remember, for a total of uh, $1,800.62 for our lower end cuts and our higher end cuts at $5.32 a pound times 150 pounds um, for a total of $798 for the total cost of our raised beef for 500 pounds at $2,660. So if you were to buy the same cuts at retail price with their associated prices, the lower end cuts we averaged at $4.42 a pound for 350 pounds for $1,547. The higher end cuts at a higher price because they're considered premium cuts at $10.25 at 150 pounds for $1,500.37. So you can see we, by having a price of 532 averaged across the lower and the higher end cuts, we can do it significantly cheaper when we figure it that way. Whereas if we were gonna buy them at the store, at those at their associated retail prices is significantly more for a total of around $3,084.50. Um, and the difference of this is roughly $424.50. Here are the prices that we used to come up with the values that we did for this presentation. Uh, I used hay prices from the USDA AMS, Ag Marketing Service, um, and also the Ag Marketing Service for retail beef cuts. Um, and this is all summarized in a paper put together by the University of Wyoming uh, that is price of freezer beef. Um, and you can see the website there where everything is summarized in a little more detail as far as costs, timing of the seasonality of some of this and um, other things. So go and check that out if you have any more questions. Um, thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope we were able to help you a little bit. Thank you.